John in Seattle listening on KBCS. Hey, John, what's up? Hi, Tom. Um, I apologize that the first call you're getting taking after that discussion to Hanford, I would like to talk about religious freedom. No, the stuff and, we were talking uh, about in the previous hours. That's fine. Sure. It, thanks very much. Um, it, the thing that I've been studying and learning about for the last month is that uh, sort of there are two things going on. One is we don't understand how hard-won religious tolerance has been. When the Constitution was passed, there were established churches in most states. Uh, in 1811, the New York State Supreme Court upheld a conviction for blasphemy, hmm. which is an example of hard state establishment. That is to say, right. you know, knuckle under to the religious forces or we will uh, convict you. Right. Uh, the last state established church was disestablished in 1833. And the thing I take from this... Which state was that? What church was it? Do you know? I don't remember. That's okay. I get from Robert Boston, his new book, Taking Liberty. Okay. Why Religious Freedom Doesn't Give You the Right to Tell Other People What to Do. And, and, and I just flat out do not remember. That's what fine. What stuck in my mind, though, is that... I, I think it's reasonable to think of religious tolerance and freedom as being monotonically increasing since the founding, that it was a hard principle to establish. It took a hundred years for something called incorporation to mean that the U.S. Constitution was incorporated into state constitutions and that the rights guaranteed in the federal constitution were also uh, guaranteed to those of us in a state Right. And uh, it took arguably it took the civil one. war for that to happen. Bingo! It, 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 exactly. And okay. since in my lifetime, you know, we moved from blue laws where stores couldn't even open on Sunday, yep. and a world in a regime of censorship, which was acceptable, and and banned books and so forth. And to my way of thinking, the religious right has lost the power to coerce the rest of us over the last. 200 years, which is what the anti-establishment clause would dictate. Mm -hmm. And so you then ask yourself, you know, what's happening? And over the last 20 years, and this I get out of an op-ed piece today by a gal named Catherine Stewart, who's apparently spent a lot of her life uh, looking into issues like this and has published uh, on, for example, the subject of the religious right yeah. trying to... John, just a half a minute children. left here. Get to your point. Got it. And the thing that I learned from her is that there is a term we need to understand called soft establishment. And when Kennedy says to this Jew and this atheist that you're not discommoded by any of the speech that you're hearing, when we're told that, you know, unless we stand up and love Jesus, we're somehow less than a really good uh, community member, we are being marginalized, and it's part of the creation of the soft establishment. They want the acknowledgement that Christianity is the dominant religion, even though it's not actually established, even though we won't put you in jail if you right. fail to follow through. We want so this is, this is the new reaction. This is, these are the, re the new reactionaries. The last 20 years has been to establish not hard establishment, but soft. Yeah, and I think that uh, Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, Billy Graham led the charge. I'm with you, John. Well, well said. Thanks for the analysis. We'll be back.